Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to bring you another Magic Leap video. In today's video, I'm going to continue part two of the video series for creating a weapon controller. So in the previous video, I show you how to incorporate a weapon controller that I had created with the Oculus Quest. And what I'm gonna be doing in this video is showing you a scene that is completed and there are a lot of options such as a weapon manager, a weapon overlay. We're also using the bullet implementation that I had. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what I have put together for you as a demo. So the scene that you see right here, it's basically a scene where you're gonna be able to shoot at different items. I have some items that are basically cubes. I also have some spheres, but I also have some instructions on the canvas that I can show you. And also an overlay here that changes based on the control that you have selected. So what I'm gonna show you is how it works in the editor. And then we're gonna go through every single component that I have in this scene. And I wanna explain it to you as well as I can so that you understand it and you can also use it in your own experiences. Also keep in mind that I'm gonna be putting this in GitHub and you know you can go ahead and download it from GitHub and then try it and is I made it generic enough for you to be able to use it in your own game or any type of experience. So what I'm gonna do is let me go ahead and play it and then I'll show you how it works. All right, so you can see that the canvas is basically above us and it gives you some description of what basically is required. So you can press the trigger button on your Magic Leap controller to shoot bullets and then use the controller to aim at the cubes in a sphere. So the way that it works is right now I have a weapon controller manager debugger. So I wanted to test this as much as I could in the editor and I'm reiterating that as much as I can because when you when you basically deploy something like this to a device, you're gonna find a lot of issues. And instead of finding a lot of issues in the device and waiting for it, like I said on the previous video, I try to do as much as I can on the editor. So for instance, on this one, I have basically a duplicate of the implementation of the real controller. So this weapon controller manager debugger also has weapon controller debuggers. And, and what it is is basically so that it works on the editor and you don't have to always run it on the device. So what I'm gonna have, what I'm gonna show you right now is how I can switch it. So right now I have that right arrow key on my keyboard mapped to the changing the controller. So if I go ahead and, and press right here on the game view and hold my, and basically press the right arrow key, you can see that not only the controller changes, but it also the information that we have right here changes. So I have the red weapon, green weapon, ML control, and I can basically go through and select different ones. You can see that they're also getting selected on the weapon controller manager debugger. So these are very generic, I mean, green weapon, but you can change the control. As you can see that, you know, anything that you put here as a child, if it has a weapon controller, is gonna be managed by this manager. So I can do that. Not only I have that, but you can see that on some of them, I have a different frequency. So that frequency determines how many bullets I'm shooting. So the lower the number, the less bullets that I'm shooting, and then the higher the number, the basically the more bullets that I'm shooting because I'm using that as a maximum value in a while loop. So what I wanna show you is, now that you can see that we can change these, we can also rotate the controller. So let's say you wanted to rotate the controller. The overlay that we have selected, that we have created here, basically response to the rotation of the controller. So you can also move the controller around just as you, if you were moving it in the real device. So what I'm doing is I'm basically using the child to move it around and it's gonna basically give us a, you know, a closer look to how it will respond when we run it on the device. So let's say that I was running this on a device and I wanted to aim, I'm gonna go on auto graphic view so that we can see exactly what we're pointing to. There we go. So let's say that I wanted to move, I wanted to push and actually shoot at some of those cubes. Let me go ahead and go back to perspective. I can hold the space key and you can see that as I'm doing that, it is changing, it's basically colliding with the cubes. So what if I wanted to aim at the aim at the sphere? So I could basically rotate my controller a little, a little bit 
and then maybe tilt it down a tiny bit we can probably do something like that and you can see that that's all working if i the other thing that i can do is i can change also my weapon let's say that i wanted to do you know maybe maybe this green one which is which has a different frequency or maybe we wanted to do just a default magic leap debugger which is going to be just the ml1 theme and that one is going to be you know a single bullet you can see that that one has a very low frequency, which means that we're only gonna get one bullet at a time if, we, if we're if we lucky. And then if I move it, maybe we just do it right there. You can see how everything responds. And the other thing that, that I'm tracking to, I, I'm tracking how many bullets I'm using. So right now I, I use a total of 158 bullets and I hit 54 items. I really didn't hit 54 unique items because I'm not tracking the uniqueness of the items that are getting hit. This just says that I'm colliding. I collided with the items 54 times. So that's what this number is. And I'm gonna show you how that is basically tracked in the stats manager so that you can do something similar in your own experience. So now you can see how this works. I'm tracking the number of bullets. I'm tracking how many hits I had. I am also colliding with different cubes. I also have a little overlay. I can also change the controller. So now how does that transfer to the ml1 device and that's what i want to show you in in the setup here so if you once you download these make sure that you look at the do these two components one is going to be the weapon controller manager debugger and the other one is going to be the weapon controller manager so this one right here it's going to be disabled automatically because i have a component that is called hiding platform and what happens if if there's a compiler flag in there that knows if you're running on, on anything other than the Unity editor, this game object, it's gonna be hidden. So by default, the thing is gonna start with this being hidden, and then basically this being enabled, which is gonna be the real Magic Leap controller. So that's what it is. This is gonna be the debugging one. This one is gonna be the, the real one, the Magic Leap controller. And then I also have different, basically different weapon controllers inside. So you can replace this with your own if you really want a weapon or if you want a sword or if you want something else, you can basically just replace this weapon controller with your own component and just make sure that it has the same components that I have on the inspector. One is going to be the controller connection handler, which is going to allow us to track when we're holding the trigger button on our controller. Make sure you also have the controller transform and the weapon controller script that I implemented for you. So that's basically how you have these ones. The other thing that I have inside of these components is I also have a weapon stats. And this is a fairly simple component that is using Text Mesh Pro. And if you go inside, you can see that the title is a Text Mesh Pro component. And it's starting at a very low font size because we're running in, in augmented reality. So the everything is in meters. So you need to make sure that that number is low enough. And then the other thing that I have is also the params. When, whenever I change the controller, which I'm gonna show you in the code, I'm basically returning the numbers and the values that, I'm, that, I'm, that are set up in the weapon controller. And then the last thing that I have is just basically a rectangle, a cube that is resized behind the scenes. And you can see that that's, you can resize this if you want, or you can change it to be something nicer. These are just placeholders for you to, you know, if you wanna do your own implementation, you can change anything that I have in here. All right, so the next thing that I have in here, you can see that if I, right now this one is a default, but if you look in, you look in here, I have multiple, multiple of them, which I can move around and you can see that those are gonna be the ones, the different ones that I'm gonna be used in the game. So let me go ahead and undo all that. And let me, yep, yep. And just so that you know, the one that is gonna be the default is gonna be the first one, not the one that you're seeing right now. So the first one is going to be just the ML, the one that has the Magic Leap theme on it. And then everything else is gonna be disabled. So that's what this is. And then the other things that are really important to know is you, I also have spheres and also cubes. So in order for you to be able to hit some of these targets, the components that you're gonna need, you're always gonna need a collider. This one has a, a box collider because it's a cube. This one has a sphere collider because it's a sphere and then the other, the other thing that is important here is that, I'm, that I have a layer that the weapon, that the bullet knows what basically to collide with. So if you look at the layer on this component, the layer is set to target. 
But if we go under prefabs in here and we look at the bullet, the bullet implementation also determines and has a layer that it knows what to hit. You can have multiple layers if you like. So I'm using a layer mass basically attribute on this component to determine what things we can collide with. So I wanted to do something simple. So target is the one that I'm gonna be that I'm gonna be colliding with. So that's why this has that layer assigned to. So those are, that's what these are. They have colliders and also a rigid body. And most of these ones and all of these ones are using gravity. And that's what you're seeing when we're colliding where basically these components are falling down. So you wanna make sure you have a collider assigned and also a rigid body assigned on each one of these components. So that's what these target components are. I have them labeled as you know, target sphere if it's gonna be a sphere and then a target cube if it's gonna be a cube. Then the ground, of course, and then I have also have a sound manager that allows me to play a song as soon as I hit the, as soon as I start shooting. And also the music, the music manager so that it gives me more of an environment, environment music. The th stats manager, it's going to be the one that I'm using to track, you know, how many bullets I'm using and how many items I hit. So that's what that is. And then that's what these components are. So just to give you a summary of these components, make sure that you're looking at the weapon controller manager, which is going to be the one responsible for changing weapons. And then the weapon controller itself is the one that is going to be responsible for the weapon itself, also for shooting the bullets and applying physics. And then the target items are going to be the things that we're going to be basically shooting against. And I show you what the ground is. So this is what the ground is, sound manager, music manager, and stats manager. The other thing that I always try to keep in mind is if I'm providing examples and prototypes, I always want to add instructions. So here's the head post canvas. It has the instructions that I show you at the beginning of this video. I also have the magic leap logo, which is kind of hidden in there, but it's in there. And then also a variable for a text box for the bullets used and also how many items we hit. So that's basically the entire the, this entire prototype. So now what I want to do is I want to show you, not only I wanted to show you the inspector, but I want to show you the implementation. So let's go back and show you because on the previous video, I just basically, we just basically added everything, but I didn't explain to you how everything works. So this is going to be a good opportunity for me to show you that. So just keep in mind that we're going to go, we might go fast, but if you have any questions about anything that I mentioned in this video, let me know in the comments because I'm more than happy to explain to you how this work. Okay, so I'm gonna open up PS Code and show you part by part. So the weapon controller, it's gonna be, like I said, the one responsible for determining what weapon is selected. So this also requires a component, which is gonna be the connection to the controller connection handler. The reason why I do this is because we need to track when somebody hits the trigger button on the controller or when somebody hits a different button on the controller, I wanna know if they did that so that I can change which weapon to be selected. So the first thing that I do here is I have a private, basically a private variable that is an array of weapon controllers. This is where we're gonna be storing all of our weapons. And then I just have an integer that determines which weapon we have selected. I also have a private variable, which is gonna be our connection to the controller connection handler. And then the cool thing about doing this is I don't have to associate them through the inspector. I just say, okay, weapons, go ahead and give me all your children's, which, you, which is gonna be the children's of the weapon controller manager. And then even if they're hidden, go ahead and show them to you. That's what this parameter is for. And then I just call get components and children of type weapon controller, and then equal to true, basically a parameter of true to give me all the, all the ones, even the ones that are hidden. And then that's how that variable gets set. The next thing that I do is I select the next weapon right away because the next weapon is gonna be, you know, the first one in the list. I'm just gonna say, okay, give me the next weapon. And then this is basically gonna call this, this meta. So the first time through this, we're gonna get the first weapon, which is gonna be the one that is gonna be the ML one because the magic leap one is gonna be at index zero. You can see that that's the first thing that I do. I get the one at index zero and then I activate that one. And then I call this method called the activate others, which basically hides all the other components that are weapon controllers from the hierarchy. Then I increment the current weapon. And I also check to make sure that the current weapon 
is not greater than or equal to the weapons that land. If it is, we basically I basically set it to zero. This is so that we can go from zero to one to one to two to two to three and then reset it to zero. So it basically allow us to select the weapons as we as we basically click on the or or hit our trigger button. So this deactivate others method goes through all the weapons that we have already in that array. And if the controller, the, the controller one does not equal to the one that we have selected, then I set it to false. So this means that if the one that I have selected is zero, it's gonna disable one, two, and three. And then the one that is zero, it's gonna be the one that is active. So I know that I'm talking a lot, but if you have, like I said, I'm gonna repeat it again, but if you have any questions about anything that I'm mentioning here, let me know. So the next thing that I wanted to do is, not only I wanted to do this through the editor, because you, you saw that I was able to change weapons in the editor. The way I'm, that I'm doing that is by using a compiler flag. I'm saying, okay, if I'm in the Unity editor, then I'm gonna basically enable this functionality. I'm gonna I'm gonna have the update method and I'm gonna track whether the user or the person who is developing this experience hit the right arrow key. If they did, I'm gonna select the next weapon. So that's why you saw when I was hitting the right arrow key, I was selecting the next weapon. Well, but if I'm running on the device, I also want to do the same thing, but I don't wanna do it when we do this because this code is not gonna be enabled, it's not gonna be available because we're not gonna be running on the Unity editor. So if we're not running in the Unity editor, how do I change weapons? So the way that I'm doing that is I'm doing that right here. I'm binding the on controller button down to these, basically to this method. So this method is called handle button down. So if we go down here, you can see how this is implementing. It takes a byte, which is gonna be the controller ID. And I also take in a button. So the way that this works is it's gonna be basically a handler. So I'm gonna, it's, it's a delegate that I'm binding to and it's going to be getting the button that is getting pressed. So in this case, I wanna check to make sure that they're, they're pressing the bumper button on the controller and making sure that the controller, for some reason, didn't get you know disconnected. So if the controller is not null, meaning that it's connected, and the button that I'm pressing is the bumper button, I'm gonna be selecting the next weapon. So that's how I change. That's how I'm changing weapons in here. You can, of course, change to the to be to to be something else if you don't want the bumper button to to be the one that is selecting the weapons. Okay, so that's how this works. And it looks like I'm not using. Test Mesh Pro in this class. I was gonna use it and then I changed my mind. So let me go ahead and remove that. All right, so I know I've been talking a lot. So let me let me go ahead and go and move into the weapon controller. So let me go back into the hierarchy so I can show you. So we I explained to you how the weapon controller manager works. Now we're gonna go into the individual pieces that are gonna be the ones that we're toggling as we as we hit the bumper, the bumper button on our controller. All right, so let's go here and let's look at everything. This is gonna be a little long because there's a lot of things to cover. But like I said, I'm gonna say it again. If you have questions, let me know. So this one is also gonna require the controller connection handler. The reason why I require that is because I'm holding the trigger button on the controller when I wanna shoot the, the bullets. So the other thing that I wanted to show as well is I wanted to show the name of the weapon on the overlay next to the controller. So if we go here, I wanted to display what the name was because I think it's cool if we have some cooler name, let's say that we had, you know, the shotgun, or if you had a different type of weapon, you wanted to display the name, you can do that as well. So that's what I added this variable for. The other thing that we need is we need to know, you know, what the prefab of the bullet is gonna be. I also need to know when where the weapon is because this might not be the weapon 3D model. This, you know, you might have different components inside so if you look at this, the one I want the the bullet to start shooting from from a specific place, and the way that I do that is I determine okay where is the mesh going to be starting from. So in this case, if we go to the weapon controller, you can see that the weapon the weapon itself is actually going to be the controller body, and that's that's what I use to calculate where the bullet needs to start from, and then I give it an offset. So if you want it to be something different, if you want it to be this, which is which seems to be better in this case. I don't know why I use that one because this one is closer to where the bullet is gonna be. But I selected the controller underscore body and then I'm doing, I'm using an offset to, to offset where the bullet is gonna be placed. All right, so that's what the weapon is. And then the force is gonna be the force that, I, that gets applied to the bullet. 
So because I'm using physics, I need to determine how fast the bullet is going to is going to have. So I'm basically using that this flow variable for that. Then I'm also using a force mode because I wanted to, to check to see how the bullet was going to react to physics. So you have different options in here. You can use force, you can use acceleration, you can use impulse, and you can also use the velo velocity exchange. And it looks like I'm, I'm losing my voice. So let me go ahead and get some water. All right, so let me, let me keep going in here. So I explained to you what the force was, also what the bullet force mode was. So the other things that I needed to know is how to set the bullet initial position. And I also wanted to give the user more of a, a UI friendly, friendly way to set in this. So I could have done a vector three that had X, Y, and Z, but I think using a flow with a range allowed me to have a slider. So if we go into the weapon controller, you can see that the X value has a slider, the Y value has a slider, and also the Z value has a slider. So instead of using a vector three, I decided to use floats for those. So the next thing that I needed to determine is I wanted to keep the bullets alive, not for too long. Obviously this is way too long, so let me change that to one. So how this works is, is the, I'm gonna be using this to, to determine when I'm gonna be destroying the bullets. And you wanna do always these for things that, you know, that are gonna be repeating. So the reason why I did this is because if I'm shooting thousands and thousands of bullets, I wanna, I wanna make sure that I keep my game performing. If I don't do this, the game is gonna crash because I'm, I have way too many 3D items in the scene. So instead of what I'm doing is I'm, I'm killing these and destroying the bullets after one second or after the parameter, the value that I give it. The other thing that I'm using here that I explained to you is the frequency. So I'm using this frequency to, to, to determine how many bullets I'm gonna be shooting at a specific time. So I'll show you the implementation below and how it works. And then I also have a timer because I need to, I'm using that timer to determine, okay, how many bullets I'm gonna be shooting at a specific time. So I'm combining these two to determine how many bullets I'm gonna be shooting. This one is gonna be obviously for the bullet sound. And then this one is gonna be for the stats that were displaying. So it's gonna be, so this weapon stats params text is going to be used for what we have right here. And I can show you how that looks in here. That's gonna be, you know, it's gonna include the name, the rate, the force, and also the frequency. So that's what this value is. And then of course, a private variable for the connection, the controller connection handler. So the first thing that I do at the beginning is I get a reference to the controller connection handler. I also bind to the untriggered down because I'm using that to determine when I'm gonna be shooting the weapon. And also I made this one optional and that's why I'm checking for null. So if you don't wanna use the, the overlay that I have in there, this is optional. But if you're using it, I'm gonna, this is how I'm gonna be setting that value. I am going to grab the name of the weapon and grab, grabbing the force, also the bullet force mode and also the bullet frequency. To, to set the values on the overlay. So that's this is going to be exactly what you see right here. And those are the values that I'm setting and how I'm setting them. So the next thing that I do is, I if I'm using the Unity Editor, and the reason why you saw the me shooting the bullets is because I'm doing, I have a little overriding here. So if I'm running in the Unity Editor, I'm basically using the fix update method. And then I'm, I'm, allow, I'm allowing the user to do that when they hit the space key. And then I call this multiple multiple shoot method that I'm also using when the when the user holds the trigger button on the Magic Leap device on the Magic Leap controller. So that's what this is, is so that you know you can test it on the editor. And then before I show you this implementation, let me show you the shoot implementation. So the first thing that I do is I get the bullet initial position. So I show you above that I could I could have done a vector three, but instead I'm using the X, Y, and Z that was set from the user by doing it in the inspector. They instantiate the bullet. I, I add the pairing of the bullet, which is gonna be the weapon transform. Then I set the bullet local position to be the bullet initial position. I also change the bullet pairing to be, so it looks like I'm doing this thing twice in here, which I don't really need to do that. And in fact, it's going to be, this is gonna be the last one. So this is more, more likely the one that is correct. So I'm assigning the bullet transform to be the transform of this component, which is gonna be the parent of the parent, which is going to land on, if, we're, if we have the weapon controller here, 
it's basically going to be a child of the content. So that's where I'm placing the bullets. And then I'm also getting the bullet rigid body and then applying a force to the bullet rigid body. And that's where we can shoot those bullets. And then what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the weapon forward position, multiplying that by the force. And then the Y value is going to be the current bullet transfer position. And then using the bullet force mode that you saw right above it. So the other thing that I that I thought was cool is this stats manager. I'm implementing, I implemented a, a singleton of that. And I'll show you how that works, but just know that every time I call shoot, I'm calling this instant increment bullets use. And this is what you're gonna be seeing on the canvas as being incremented every time I shoot a bullet. So that how th that's how this shoot works. The other thing that I wanted to show you is this is only for a single bullet, but what if I wanted to do multiple bullets? And that's what I'm using here. I have this multiple shoot that every time I call it, I'm going to basically play the sound on the bullet. And I have a little while loop. The way that this works is going to loop as long as we're true. I'm going to call the shoot, basically the shoot method that I have here. And then I'm using the bullet timer, incrementing it by the delta time, multiplying it by one. And then as soon as I hit the frequency, which is the value that I show you right above it, so as soon as we hit the max, we're going to set the bullet timer back to zero and then we're going to break out of this loop. So every time you shoot, I'm going to go through this timer and then when we hit the max, we're going to basically exit out. So the higher the number, the more bullets that we're going to be shooting. All right, so I'm losing my breath, but we're almost there, guys. <laughs> All right, so the next thing that I wanted to show you is I show you the implementation for when we're doing this on the Unity Editor, but what happens when I trigger the button with the Magic Leap device. And that's when, when this method comes in handy, in the ML input on trigger down, and I'm calling this handle on trigger down. So just like I did on the Weapon Controller Manager that I show you that we were binding to this met a method that allows us to track buttons on the Magic Leap controller, I'm doing the same thing here on the Weapon Controller. But except it's a little bit different because I'm, capture I'm capturing the trigger down where on this one, we're basically capturing the button on the bumper. So on this, in this case, what, I, what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, if I get the controller ID and if the flow value, I guess the flow value is not really getting used other than for the intensity, but I get the controller ID first and I say, okay, if the controller is connected and the ID, basically the ID that I'm getting passed in matches that controller ID, then I change, I send you a boss through and let me say that again, I sent you basically a vibration on the controller with the intensity that I'm getting based on the float value that gets passed in. And then I call the multiple shoot, multiple shoot that I show you right here. So that's what the weapon controller manager is, is the one that, so the weapon controller, that's the one that is gonna be responsible for shooting bullets, shooting one or many bullets and also binding to the trigger button. So that's what the weapon controller manager is and also the weapon controller. So the last thing that I wanted to show you, there's a couple more things. So let me show you the stats manager. And this one is the one that is gonna be responsible for up basically updating the UI on our canvas. So I'm not gonna go in depth into this because I think I'm, I think I'm making this video too long. Just know that these, in order for you to increment the bullets used or the increment the items hit, you can just call these, the name of the class and then call the singleton, and then call the name of the method, just like I did on the weapon controller. So the way that it's gonna work is, let's say that you wanted to increment it in here, you can say it's stats manager, and then instance, and then you can, you know, you can call the methods that I just explained, which is the increment items hit, and also the increment bullets use. And of course, you can use this in your own game and just tweak it based on what you want to track. So that's what the stats manager is. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you was the hide in platform and, and also the bullet control. I'll show you that last. So this one is for hiding the debugger control. And I show you that one at the very beginning. And you can see that I have, if you go in here and yep, you, you can see that I have the hide in platform. So the way that it works is basically if we're not running on the Unity editor, we're, we're deactivating this item. The reason I do that is so that you can, you mistakenly don't enable that controller, which is only meant to work with the editor when you're running on the Magic Leap device. All right, so the last thing that I wanna show you is, 
And I explained that a little bit in the other, on the previous video, is that I'm using a ray cast on the bullet to determine, to find out if we're colliding with other objects. So this, this component is really important because if you don't, if we don't have it, we're not going to be able to shoot at different items. You will be able to shoot, but there won't be colliding with anything. So let's go back into the prefabs and I'll show you this right here. Let me just collapse the sphere and also the rigid body. You saw that we need, just make sure that you have a rigid body and also a sphere collider with this component. And the other thing that you need to make sure is that the, like I said in the beginning, the layer that you're going to be colliding with needs to be set here on what to hit. And also the enemy impulse force. This is going to be the force applied to the item that we're colliding with. So if I set this to, you know, 200, this is going to be a force applied to the item that we're colliding with, not to the bullet. So that's very important to know. So the first thing that I use here is I use a Raycast check units. This is going to be the units that I use to determine what distance we have with the item that we're colliding with. So this is very important. The other thing that I have in here is also the enemy impulse on hit. This is going to be the force that gets applied when we collide with another item. So for the most part, I'm basically using, you know, the force on Z. So if I'm if I'm colliding with this item, I'm basically changing the the forward direction of that item, and then basically applying a multiplication by five. You can change this value as well, or you can change it in in the inspector right here. The other thing that I set by default is the what to hit. This is just gonna this is just saying that it's basically not set. This is the default value for the layer mask. And then I also determine what the force mode is gonna be on this, which by default I set it to force. So because we're using physics in here, I'm using the fix the fix update method. I declare a ray cast hit, and then I use physics that ray cast, I grab the transform position of this of the bullet. And then I use transform the transform direction. I press in the vector three the forward, and then I do comma the hit because this is going to be the raycast hit. If we are hitting with something, the value of this is going to be the value of the item that we're hitting with. So it's going to be basically the raycast. This is going to be the distance that we're using, which is the distance that we set on the top. And then this is going to allow us to determine what items we can hit. So the other thing that I'm using for debugging purposes is that debug that draw ray. And let me show you how that works so that you have an idea. So if I drag and drop that bullet into the scene view right here, and let me change this to 000. And what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and hit play and I'll show you how this works. And of course, the bullet is going to fall because I have gravity enabled. So I'm going to leave gravity on, but I'm going to set it to kinematic so I can show you how the bullet works. And, and the, this is really helpful for troubleshooting purposes. If you don't know what distance you're going to be using, you can see that that automatically, let me go ahead and set this maybe to a lower value, maybe to one. You can see that I'm, I'm basically casting array, array. Let me do two point, oh, it looks like the no, lower value is going to be one. But you can see that as soon as I do that, it's ray casting array. And you can see, yep, as I get closer, so that's what I'm using for, for debugging purposes. I'm using debug that draw ray, passing in the value of the transfer position of this object. Also the transform direction. I multiply by the heat distance and also change it to a to a color yellow. That's what you saw. That's why we're showing a line that is yellow because this is what is doing that. Then the other thing that I do is I get out of the heat, I get the enemy rigid body. So in our case, it's gonna be the target rigid body. So if we are colliding with this cube, I'm going to get the rigid body of that cube. And that's what's going to allow me to apply a force to that cube to basically simulate that I'm colliding with that cube. Then I'm also calling the stats manager instance to increment, you know, the item to determine that the item was hit. And then if we got, if that item had a rigid body, then I'm applying a force to that item. I'm getting the enemy impulse on here, which is basically declared on the very top. Also getting the heat transform position and using the enemy impulse force mode that is also getting used right here. So this is what simulates a uh, we hitting an item or colliding with one of these one one of these colliders, one of these components in the scene. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you. Let me go ahead and run this on the device and I can show you how it looks on the device. Thank you guys. 
All right, guys, so let me show you the scene that I have running on my Magic Leap. So as you can see, I'm basically changing the weapons right now. i rotating the controller. You can see that as I press the trigger button, I'm also shooting against the items that I have in the view. You can also know that the raycast is working, the hits the, in the canvas are working, also the bullets use. And you can see that everything looks really good. You can also change, I'll show you here as I'm shooting how the controller gets changed and everything gets detected very fairly fast. Let me actually go in, oh, it's right here where we start to do that. Just wanted to see how the rotation look and also how the controller look as I was toggling the control and also rotate and everything looks good. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources from the developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.